up for our music ministry, for our singers. Welcome our brother LJ. He's, he's amazing. You guys are doing a wonderful job. Um, we're really excited about this, this message because we're in a, a series that we started called See It. It's called See It. And it's, you know, it's 2020, and after a while, it kind of be like, okay, we get it. 2020, clarity, vision, like, okay. After a while, it's just like, all right, we got it. But there's really some truth to it that God wants to do something. He wants us to see what he's doing. And I don't know if you're like me, but I'm tired of seeing things the way I've been seeing them. I'm tired of seeing things out of my own head, my own intellect, following my own ways, walking around blind, hitting my head up against the wall, can't see clearly. I'm ready to see what God sees, amen? I'm ready to get God's perspective on my life. Is, are you, anybody else like me in here? I'm ready to see. So the, uh, the title of this sermon today is Seeing What God Sees. That's what we want to do today. We want to see what God sees. And we just pray, uh, God is so great because all of these songs that we saw, I did not even talk with Lauren, but all of these songs that been, we've been singing and worshiping and praying to, I believe God's going to answer our prayer today, yes. right? We've been, we want to see Jesus. We want to see things clearly. This is where God is going to answer our prayer. So I just want to open up with a story. I have, um, I do a thing called Young Life College at Cal Berkeley. Um, we met last last Sunday. And as we close our time together, we usually have a time of prayer request. You know, that's what you usually do to be like the Christian-like thing. I'm going to open and, you know, close in prayer. So, you know, they're college students. This is a typical college prayer request. Hey, pray for my semester, you know, my classes, the professor I'm trying to get in. Like those kind of things. My roommate, can you just pray for my roommate? Because like all the regular things, my meal plan, you know, just things like all kind of the college thing. But there's this one, this one particular um, young lady, as we were going around, she said something so profound. She said, you know what I want to pray for? I want to pray for spiritual revelation. I want to pray that God will give us spiritual revelation, that he would give the people at this school spiritual revelation. And I was like, Bruh. you know, like the, the DJ, Bruh. what? You said what now? What amazing prayer request. Like, I hadn't heard a student pray for that, which just goes to show that God is moving and active up at Cal Berkeley, despite of what people try to say that's going up there. There are students there wanting to experience the spiritual revelation of God. I thought that was so amazing that she would ask that. And you might be like, okay, what is spiritual revelation? What is divine revelation? Well, here's a great um, definition. Divine revelation is the process by which God reveals the knowledge of himself, his will, and his design, divine providence to the world of human beings. It's how God reveals himself to us. And if, if you're like me, I need a little bit of that in my life. Like, we just came out of January. Can you believe January is over? Like, what just happened? Where's our resolutions? What, what happened with them? But, you know, we concoct these, re these resolutions. We make vision boards. We got goals. We got planners. We've done all of these things, right? But very, very, very rarely do we take a minute and say, God, but, but what's your vision for my life, God? Because, I, I've, I'm, man, I'm coming up this year. I'm going to get this money. I'm going to get this bag. I'm going to get my coins. I'm going to get this promotion. Go get a car. I'm going to come up. I'm going to be shining this year. Like, we got all these things. Like, we're living a meme, right? We're just a living meme with all the phrases. But very rarely do we stop and say, you know, hey, here's what I was thinking, God. But what do you, what do you see for this year? What do you, what do you, what's on your list for my life? What do you want to do? Here's my list. You can revise it however you want to. Ooh, we be holding on to that list like, don't do this in this order, God. Ready? A, B, C, do it. So this is our challenge. Getting God's perspective on things. It's kind of a foreign concept because we rarely think about that. But um, today we have a story that is so good. 
from the Bible. Now, the person we're going to talk about could very easily win the unknown character of the Bible award. If there were an award for Bible characters you do not know, this person would probably win. His name is Simeon. And even off the top, you guys are like, hmm, Simeon, yeah. <laughs> yep, mm-hmm, yeah, that poor little Simeon, he has no stories, no, no plays about, he don't have a little song, he don't have, we don't do no coloring books about him. Simeon, you know, there's a couple of Simeons, not the Old Testament Simeon, which was one of the tribe of Judah, not that, I'm talking about a New Testament Simeon. You guys are like, hmm, ah, interesting. So the award of best uh, unknown characters of the Bible goes to Simeon, congratulations. I'll be accepting his award on today. We're gonna read about Simeon, and this passage comes from Luke 2. Luke 2, 25, let's hear about this guy, Simeon. Um, okay, you guys ready? All right, it says, at that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations. He is the glory of your people, Israel. And I just want to clarify, I want to go back and read, um, the, I want to emphasize verse 25 and 26. It says, the Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Amen. Yeah. That's the kind of clarity I'm talking about for this year. That's the perspective that I'm talking about in our life. How many would love to see it like Simeon? Like that God will reveal to him something so amazing. Like this is the 2020 focus. We're talking about focus. I'm talking, this is laser precise about God will reveal to him that he was going to see exactly what he had been praying for. How many have been praying for some things? Wouldn't you love to know for sure that you are going to see the thing and not just hope for it, but you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt? We're trying to see it like Simeon. Now, this guy Simeon, since no one knows about him, let's talk about his life. How did he get to this level? Just think, all the people in the Jewish nation were all hoping for the same thing. They were all waiting for Messiah. Even to this day, the, our Jewish brothers are still waiting for Messiah, for they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But they're still waiting, so of all the people in that region, in that area, in that lifetime, everybody was waiting on Messiah, but God revealed it to him. Isn't that amazing? Would you like to be the one that God reveals things to? Come on. Would you like to have, like, inside information? Do you want to see things the way God sees it? Well, let's look at our brother Simeon. He had uh, three things. There are three things about brother Simeon. The first thing is that he had an intentional walk with God. How do I know that? Verse 25 said, oh, wait, we're not there. We're almost there. I'm going to sing y'all a song until it comes. There it is. He had an intentional relationship. He was intentional with God. Verse 25 said he was righteous and devout. He was intentional with his walk with God. Now, this is where we really got to catch it. Because I really feel that in this year, God is wanting intentionality from us. He's, re he's requiring it this year if you want the clarity that you say you want. This is just not a fly-by-night kind of religion. Like, I'll come to church when I want. Or not even church. Like, I'll just, you know, I'll do the God thing to check it off to do the things. No, this was intentional. He was righteous, which means he did the right thing. He was known for doing the right thing. 
You could always count on Simeon. He was going to do the right. You could ask him advice. He's going to tell you the right thing. He was righteous, and he was devout, which means, oh, Lord, I done fell in a crack, Jesus. <laughs> he was devout, which means that he had an attentional, regular cycle with God, a rhythm with God. He had a time that he spent with God, and it was intentional. He probably had his little planner, his calendar, the little scroll that he rolled out. This is my time with God, and nothing else is going to touch it. He was intentional with the things of God. He was devout with it. That means he was known for this. Like, where's Simeon? You know Simeon going to be over there praying. Like, people knew this is what he was known for. Devout. How devout are we to the thing? And I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about we got to read a certain amount of chapters, we have to pray a certain amount of time. Not religious, not check marks, but this is really, I want to spend time with you, God. And it's regular and it's consistent being righteous and devout. That's one thing, we, the first thing we see about Simeon. He's a pretty cool dude. The second thing we see about Simeon is that he lived in prayerful expectation. Now check this out. He lived in prayerful expectation. It says he was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. He had one prayer request. He had one burden. He probably talked about it all the time. When they were like, hey, Simeon, how you doing? You know, I'm just up here waiting for God. I'm just waiting on the things of God, just waiting for him to come. Like, it looked like that was like, it was, it was his thing. Everybody knew what his passion was. He was eagerly waiting for it. He wasn't like passively like, oh, well, come like he was on on edge like God's going to do it. Watch. He's doing it. They'd be like, Simeon, we've been waiting for a while. God's going to do it. He eagerly had a expectation and prayer, a burden, a passion for something. And this is what I like about it. He had a passion for something that wasn't necessarily personal to him. He wasn't like, I need a new chariot. I'm getting me some new sandals. Like, it's all, I'm coming up in a temple this year. Like, he wasn't, it wasn't about him. He had a burden for a people group. He had a burden for something that doesn't even have to really do. He's a part of that people group, but it wasn't necessary for him. In our Western society, we tend to make a lot of things all about us. Go check your resolution list. Go look at your vision board. I'm going on a cruise this year, and then I'm going to, like, have a brand new wardrobe, and then, like, it's mostly, it's us-centered. I love Simeon because he spent time in prayer for something other than himself. And, look, he was in it for the long, he was in the long game. It wasn't like, I'm going to pray, like, for two weeks, and then, man, if I don't see nothing, then <laughs> I tried. No, this is what he was known for. I am here. I am expecting. I am, I'm expecting something from God. Anybody expecting God to do something? Like, I, like I'm really believed. Like, I'm expecting. It. it was like, well, God might send the Messiah. No, he was expecting it. We can really learn a lot from Simeon. Having a prayerful expectation for a whole people group. Now, some of us in here have a desire, have a passion, have a burden from God that he's given to you for something other than yourself. Maybe it's a people group. Maybe it's a group of kids. Maybe it's a marginalized group. Maybe it's a houseless loved ones. Maybe it's a nonprofit. Maybe it's a vision. Maybe it's a, 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 a business venture. Maybe it's something that's other than yourself. Am I, is anyone in here like that has a burden for something or somebody, a people group, a place? a region, a country. This is from God. It's a, it's a divine burden that he gives you. Now, this is what I like about Simeon. He took this, this, this burden and he presented it before God. And God did an, an interesting thing. I just want to ask a quote. I saw this quote, and I'm just going to throw it out here. If God answered all your prayers, would the world look different? Or just your life? I'm going to say it one more time. If God answered all your prayers, would the world look different or just your life? 
So I think God is moving us this year, in this year of clarity, from focusing so much on ourselves and moving us into a us mentality, a community mentality, not just I'm out here for me and looking out for me and I'm about to come up and y'all gonna see me shining. Like that's, I think God's moving us away from that and wanting us to lean into having a burden for others, a people group. That is a divine burden that God gave to you. And the, the prayer he prayed was for rescue. Think about that, the people that God has laid on your heart. The prayer he prayed was, God, if you just send the Messiah to rescue them. How many of the people you know need rescuing? Like if they only knew Jesus, if they only knew it was a better way, if they only knew they don't have to live like this, if they only knew that there was uh, they freedom from bondage or addiction, that there's a better way without violence or whatever your, the, your burden is. He wanted the Messiah to rescue them. And in some translation it said he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was looking for the comfort. Like, God, when will you come and comfort our people? Sounds like a lot of our African-American heritage. When will you come and comfort us? When will you come and make justice of what we've been through? When will you come and encourage us? This is why God has given you the burden. Because someone needs to see that there is rescue through your life, through Jesus. Amen? Amen. This is what he's doing. He, at the bottom, end of the day, this is why I love Simeon. He just wanted the Messiah. Like, God, you can have, you can have everything else. I'm not, this prayer is not even about, I just want you. I just want you to come. And at the end of the day, I think that God is putting a heart cry in front of us and in our hearts that says, Jesus, I just want you. All the other things are cool, but they don't satisfy. Is there anybody else in the room that has a heart cry that says, God, I just want you. I just want you. That's what Simeon cried out. I just want the Messiah, the anointed one, the one who was sent to rescue. This is all I want. It's the only thing I pray about. The Simeon's all right. Y'all didn't even know about Brother Simeon. Brother Simeon, all right. Okay, first two points, pop quiz. First thing, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I got you. Okay, I was just playing. Thank you, Renee. He was intentional with his walk with God. Second, he had prayerful expectation. He lived in prayerful expectation. The third thing is that the Holy Spirit was upon him. Now, you got to get this part. The Holy Spirit was upon him. Remember, if we look at the proximity of this chapter, this is like the beginning of Luke. Like, Jesus was a baby. The Holy Spirit didn't fall until the book of Acts, some 50-something years later, maybe more. So I love the way the Holy Spirit was just interweaving and working all throughout the background of this story. He hadn't even fully come, but he was just lining things up. The Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. And back then, before the cross, the Holy Spirit would just come upon people, and then he would leave. He would come upon for a thing, a purpose, and then he would leave. So the, particularly, he was on Simeon, which is so amazing. It says the Holy Spirit did two things to it, to him. It re, he revealed to him, and he led him. The Holy Spirit was on him. He revealed something to him, and then he led him. And I get so excited. This is what we want. This is how life should be for it. This is how we want to experience life. This, my friends, is how we see it. We can't see it without the Holy Spirit. Our ingenuity, our brilliance, our genius can only take us so far. This is where we get a point in our life where we're like, God, I need your divine revelation. It's the only way I'm going to see it. I need to tap into some wisdom that I know nothing about. I need some heavenly strategies that I can't concoct. I need it from you. Because our human intellect will only take us so far, and it'll make us think that we know it all, and we don't. There's divine insight, and this is the life God is inviting us into. Look what the Holy Spirit did to him in verse 26. I love this. The Holy Spirit was upon him and revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. 
he told him about it. I, I don't see any recollection in here where it's like every day, send me and pray, God, don't let me die before I see this. Like that, I don't see that in there. That wasn't his prayer request. But because he brought this burden to God regularly, God was like, I'm going to do something for you. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to let you see the thing that you're praying for. Wouldn't that be amazing if God, think about your burden. I'm going to let you see the very thing you pray for. And this is what God wants to do in our life. He wants to reveal something to us. He also led him. The Holy Spirit led him. It says in verse 27, after God told him, and hey, you're going to see this, that day the Spirit led him to the temple. Now, he could have got his word and be like, cool, 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 cool. I'm going to see the Messiah. Let me just go take a nap and lay down. I can chill. Because Messiah going to come to me, right? I'm just going to do my thing. No, he still came to the temple, still devout, still righteous, still doing the right thing. And God led him. He was divinely led. This is what we call divine encounters. This is divine timing. Have you ever experienced divine timing where you were just at the right place at the right time to see the right person, to unlock the right door, to make the right connection, to get the business card that you need to get into a program, a job, a house? Divine. And I just really feel God calling us into this to the place where we're, not no, we're no longer surprised about it. Usually we see them like, can you believe that they just happened to be there. It was such a coincidence. No, God's calling us into divine timing where we'll say, that was God. Oh, that was all God. He led me to this moment. He led me to this person. I mean, I've been in crazy situations where there, I would just, you know, happen to go to the store to get, like, pick up something. And then I meet the very person I was just thinking about. Or this is God. It's a God thing. Friends, can I invite you to imagine that this is how God wants you to live on a regular basis. He wants you to be spirit-filled and spirit-led. He wants to reveal things to you that no man can give you. Yes, still go to school, still learn, get your certificates, do all that thing, do all the things, but then he's going to give you insight. Do you all believe this? I believe it. Come on. Divine timing. He was right there, right when Jesus came. It was so amazing. Simeon had to be open to however God chose to reveal the Messiah. Now, just think about this. He's at a temple. There's lots of baby dedications going on. You know how many kids that had to be there? There's, there was he, there's the baby. Now, for the Holy Spirit to reveal to him, Right there, that baby. A baby? Really? Do you think he was expecting to see a baby? See, you had to be, oh, he had to be open to however God was going to reveal it to him. And a lot of times in our lives, we reject the things that God is showing to us because it's in infant form. It's little. It's just starting. And we're like, we just discard it. Like, oh, no, that's not what... No, sometimes it's little. I'm not having it because only 10 people going to show up, so I'm not going to do it. It's just, you know, I'm not making all the money. I'm just making a little sum, so forget it. It's an infant form. The business, the job, the nonprofit, the people. Sometimes the people we're sowing into, you don't see it. They still act in infantile. And we reject, like, oh, that's no, not, maybe I heard wrong. Could it be that God is going to reveal things to you, but it's going to come little? But Simeon, he was led by the Spirit. He knew. He's like, that, there he is. That's the Messiah right there. A baby. There he is. And he, he, just, he rolled with it. He was like, okay, that's what we're doing see it. And he was happy and he rejoiced and he held it in his arm. He didn't see it from afar. That's what I want you to see. The thing that God has put a burden. You want, he wants, God wants you to up person, up close and personal. You will see it. You will touch it. You will hold it. You will rejoice in it. This is the time that God is going to let you see what he sees. 
Anybody want that? I want to see what God has for me. I want God's mind. I want his perspective. I want his heart on my life and the things that he's given me a burden for. So as we close, just three questions. How can you walk more intentionally with God this week? Not a bunch of check marks, not about, you know, I gotta do things so I could be, no. Like, to the point where I just want you, Jesus. You're all I want. I need to spend time. The only way you get familiar with somebody's voice is that you talk to them a lot. You hear, you hang out with them a lot. That's how we hear his voice. You hang out with him. Not because you want something, but just because he's God. And that he's one, and you appreciate everything he's done for you. How can you walk more intentionally with God? To who are you living in prayerful expectation for? Who are you in the long game with? Who are you willing to pray for every day? Maybe every week. Maybe six months from now, you still, same prayer. God bless them, keep them, do this, save them, heal them, deliver. Who is it? Are you willing to pray even next year for the same thing without quitting? Will you continue to pray until you, God continue to reveal things to you about it? Who are you in the long game with? I, will, I am committing to pray for this until I see Jesus rescue the situation. Until I see the comfort and consolation in it. Last one. How can you live a spirit-filled life and a spirit-led life? How can you really lean into this? Because like I said, if you want to see it this year, you're not going to see it with these eyes. You're not going to see it in this flesh. You got to see it from God's perspective. He can only give you his mind and his heart. So how can you live more intentionally and be more spirit-filled? So you know the difference between us and Simeon? Even though Simeon is amazing, he got his little paragraph in there, and he did great things. But there's a big difference between us and Simeon. See, Simeon... His dispensation was before the cross. He lived when he saw Jesus as a baby. But then Jesus would go on to die on the cross and rise again. And then the Holy Spirit was given to us. See, the Holy Spirit was just on him. But the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? The Holy Spirit is, is residing and abiding in you. So my question is, how much more? How much more? How much more does God want to do in you than even in Brother Simeon? He got his little paragraph. He did great. But guess what? The greater one is living in you. How much more does he want to lead you? That how much more does he want to reveal things to you? How much more does he want to connect you in divine encounters? Do you believe God is wanting to do this? I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of times our perspective is, we're like, God, please, God, please, God, please. He's like, no, this is what I want to do. Let's do this. Like, I want, I've been waiting for you to partner with me. Right. I'm more than happy to reveal my heart to you. Yeah. I'm more than happy, but this is the thing about God. He doesn't waste words. Right. He will not waste words. If you're not in a position to receive it, if you're not in a position to obey it, he'll just say, oh, well, I'll wait. Come back. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be ready when you are. Spirit led. I just want to pray over this, um, this verse. This Ephesians. Later on, Paul would write this. And this is the verse I want to pray over us. It's such a great verse. It says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now look, notice you didn't get this spirit to come up, get a better car, better house, magazine article. It wasn't for you. The, the reason why God wants to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation is to what? That you may know him. That's his hope for you. God, let me reveal to you who I am so that you can know me better. And let me tell you what happens. When you see Jesus for who he is, 
when you really get a glimpse of him, when you really begin to tap into, oh my gosh, Jesus, you are amazing, it changes everything. It changes the way you worship. It changes the way you give. It changes the, your gratitude. It changes the way you treat people. When you see Jesus, this is a prayer. I love this college student. I'm praying this every day. God, give us a spirit of revelation. Show us who you are. We sung it today. Let us see Jesus. Anybody ready to see Jesus? Like a different paradigm. Like not like Pastor Ernest said, not the seven-year-old when you said that prayer when you were seven. Not that, that was cool for that revelation. But now we're 20 years into the game. God, I need to see you in a different light. And the cool thing about Jesus, there's so many facets of him. It's limitless. Like, you can, once you see one aspect, it's like you got 50 more levels. Like, you can't top him out. He will continually show himself to you as much as you want to receive it. So come on, let's stand. We're just going to pray into this word. We're going to have a little time of uh, prayer and reflection. We're going to do something a little different today. I want to I wanna invite those who have a burden, that God has given a burden for a people group, a business, organization, a nonprofit, a group of people who are marginalized, kids, anything that God, maybe it's a country, maybe it's a region, maybe it's your own family. God's like, just you pray for your family. I want to invite those who feel a burden just to come. We're just going to come to the altar, and we're just going to spend some time just praying for people. Now, I don't want you to, I said this at 9 o'clock, look, there's nothing magical up here, nothing, this is great, we're all welcome, come on up, there's nothing scary or coming down here. If you have a particular heart or a burden for a group of people, some, a place, a country, a region, an organization, marginalized, no, just pick, take some time, spread out. I just want you to close your eyes and just begin to just begin to pray into that burden. Think of Simeon. He eagerly awaited for Jesus to rescue the people that he had a burden for. Come on, just begin to cry out, God, would you, would you do it? Will you reveal yourself to them? God, we just want to pray for them. Pray for the people that you've given me a heart for. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Yes, God, yes, God. Give me the words God, would you bless them? that would you will help them? bring life. God, they need you. Words on the wings of a morning, the dark night you, will God. fade away. Come cry out for that people group. Cry out for them. Heart. Cry out for your family. Cry out for the marginalized. Cry out. Speak God, to we my need you. heart. God, do it in Make a way. Spirit. Jesus. A message You're of able. love. You're able, God. You're able to encourage able, me. God. Lifting You're my heart God. from but despair. How you love me and care you for me you if you speak to you my heart. So speak to my heart, Lord. Yes. 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 And give me a holy word. Worship, worship. If Come I can't hear from you, Come on, keep praying. then I'll know what Hallelujah. to do. And I won't go alone. No, I'll never go on my own. And just let your spirit guide. And let your word say, speak to my, speak to my heart, Lord. Say, give me your holy God, word. God, I need your revelation your knowledge, oh God. Say, if I can, if, if I, I can, can hear, say, Lord. then I know what to do. Then I know what I to won't do. go alone. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my I'll own. Never go on so my just own. let your spirit guide let and lead me in. Guide. And let your word abide. Speak to me. Say, I won't go 
altar sometimes God will give you a burden and sometimes he will break your heart for the things for the burdens of people when you just begin to let God just break your heart for those things a lot of times we won't pray into the things unless we really have a breaking a empathy a heart cry for the people that we are concerned about God, will you break our hearts for the things that break your heart? God, will you give us such a passion and a burden that we can't even leave it alone? Because this comes from you. And you gave it to us to give it back to you so that we can hear your heart. Come on, lift your hands if you need to hear the heart of God. God, I want to see this burden the way you see it. God, will you give us revelation that we don't know about? Can you give us strategies? Can you give us ways, oh God? that can only come from you. People will look at you and be like, how did you come up with this? And you will just be like, it was the Lord. There was no way flesh and blood can have revealed this to me. It came straight from heaven. Will you receive that? God, I just need your wisdom and your revelation knowledge. Now we also have a group in here who says, God, I want to be filled with your spirit. God, fill me in a way that I know that you're real. Come on, this is something that we should be praying every day. Like every time you get gas, like this is a thing. The same with our Christian life. Every time we need to continue to fill up. So can everyone who just really wants to lean into the way Simeon lived, God, I want to be filled, spirit filled. I want to be filled, spirit led. I want to be spirit revealed, oh God. Come on, lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit. Come on, open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me in a way that I know that you are real. Fill me in a way that I am unashamed. I need to be led by you. I need to hear you clearly. God, will you reveal things to me, Holy Spirit, that I don't know? Will you give me divine encounters? Come on, lift your hands for divine encounters. God, will you help me to run into the right people at the right time with the right connections? to the next level that you have for me, to the strategies and the the things that you have for the burden. God, will you begin to line it up? Line it up, Jesus. We promise to give you the glory. We promise to give you the glory. No more will we say it was a coincidence or I just happened to be there. God, we're going to say it was you. It was you, God. Thank you, God. Lead us, God. Guide us. Direct us. Hallelujah. And if you're here and you're like, I need Messiah. I need to be rescued. I am the one who needs comfort. I am the one who needs consolation. I need Messiah. We recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one. If you're here and you're like, I want to receive him into my heart, just say, Jesus, I receive you. I believe that you are Messiah. I believe that you were that you died, that you were buried, and you rose again. I believe it. No longer do you have to wait for comfort. No longer do you have to wait for someone to rescue. He's already here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just sing one more time and just pray into it. Speak. Speak to my heart. Come on, pray and worship. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. will never be the same for we will be spirit led and spirit filled 
God, we will be intentional with you. We will live in prayerful expectation. And God, we can't wait to see what you're going to do in our lives. God, we can't wait to see how you're going to speak into our burden. We believe that we are going to see the answer. Like Simeon, you are going to show us the answer. You're going to use us to do great things. You're going to use us to help other people, not just build a kingdom for ourselves. God, use us. We say, here we are. Come on, somebody say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Send me, oh God. I'll do it. I'll go. I'll listen. I'll obey. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank God. Once you give somebody a high five as you go back to your seat. Hallelujah.